Good morning, family. This is uh, it's one of those uh, tough sermons, I would say. I call it tough because I I had one sermon and the Lord decided to say, no, that's not the sermon for you today. I'm going to change it. So it was changed in the middle of the week, and then uh, more and more became revealed. Even the title had changed a couple of times. Uh, it was almost the, the title of the, the sermon or the word that no one really wants to hear. But the true title is the question, is willful sin a part of your character? Is willful sin a part of your character. Now the definition of character is the aggregate features and traits that form the individual nature of some person or thing. I know that character is formed by various surroundings. Family can form your character. Social interaction outside of the family can form your character. Scripture should form your character. And oftentimes we get caught up more in what's the social outside of even family and outside of Scripture that forms character. There's so many influences out there that makes a person who they are because they allow it. You can choose to allow good, what's righteous, or you can choose to allow what's not so good, and what's not so righteous. The choice is in your hands. The funny thing that I thought about and what came to me is that so often we try to conform to this world, an ever-changing world. It keeps changing. There's new things that are introduced to us all the time. Sad thing about it is it's not really new, it's just how it's delivered is new. But the funny thing again is that as we try to conform to something that's changing, why is it that we don't conform to what never changes? Amen. Who never changes? Come on. You see, it's kind of, it's, it's funny to me that every time I was thinking about Lucy and, 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 uh, and the Peanuts gang there, and I thought about as Lucy would hold that football. And every time Charlie Brown would try to kick this football, but yet she moved it all the time. She's moving. It's kind of what the world is does to us all the time. It moves the finish line. It moves the goal post. It moves, and we just keep trying to chase it, chase it, and chase it. And yet it's continuously moving. However, our father never moves. Our father is right there. So then our character begins to change to conform to this world, a changing world. I pray that many of you have found that we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to stop trying to chase whatever the world has out there. Just let the world be the world. Keep speaking what is against what we see that is willful sin. There's even things out there that we know goes against God that people do. And even then, they tend to fall into traps of sin. Condemnation, hurting people for what they believe in or whatever it is that they're doing. That's not the will of God. And that's not Christ-like. If we're to imitate Christ, Christ says, I'm going to share the good word. You should share the good word. You should absolutely share the good word. But if it's not received, shake the dust off your sandals. Move on, is what he's saying. You've already planted that seed. It's no longer for you to try to change someone, it's, it, especially by force. What, how, when has that ever changed? When has that ever changed? So we have to be careful that even though we believe and we have faith and we trust in what God is doing, that we don't fall into a trap of sin even of ourselves because willfully, we want to go out and cause danger, which is not what God has called us to do. Hebrews 10, 26 tells us, For if we sin willfully 
after we receive the knowledge of truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. I'm going to move on from there. I'm going to come back to it. But we're going to go to 2 Peter 2, 20 and 22. It says, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The latter end is worse for them than the beginning, for it would have been better for them to not have known the way of righteousness than having known it. To turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. You see, once you receive the good news, the cleansing, the salvation, the freedom, we can't turn back. We shouldn't turn back. We should fight against it with every bit of our fiber. And yet, we tend to go right back to where we started. It's, it's even in the Proverbs where it says, this is, it goes on, I'm not going to read Proverbs, I'm going to read 2 uh, Peter 2.20. To, it says, uh, but it happened to them according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit mm. and a sow having washed to her wallowing in, having been washed to her wallowing in the mire. All it is, is you, you, we all know this. We've seen it before. It's something that's very disgusting. A dog will vomit. And then all of a sudden the dog says, mm, that's tasty. I'm going to go ahead and eat that. I'm going to take it back in. When you're vomiting something out, it means that it's not good. So no good to you. It's like the pig that gets cleaned up and yet they go right back to the mud. They go right back to the dirt. You see, we have a Christ that is gone and we just celebrated his return, Resurrection Sunday. We have a Christ that went to the cross for us. We don't have another, we don't have another Christ. We don't have another Jesus. So that's what Hebrews 10, 26 is saying. There no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. When you keep going back, it's a rejection is what's happening. The work doesn't stop right then. When we continue to sin, especially those that know, you know, Scripture just said it, especially those that have the knowledge. When you continue that, it's a form of rejecting Christ and all that he's done. You've heard me say it before. It's like crucifying him all over again. We have to acknowledge that the sin is there, but willful sin is so, so destroying to our nature, to our very nature. What nature am I talking about? We have to, you have to understand and look at yourself as a dualistic person. When people say, oh yeah, I've heard that before, it's flesh and blood. No, I'm talking about flesh and spirit. You have to separate yourself from these things. You see, I, I said that, you know, this is, might have been the sermon that no one wants to hear. Everybody wants to hear the the, you know, the good news and the salvation and the freedom and all that. But the, the, the fact remains that sin still runs rampant in our world. Sometimes sin still runs rampant in our very lives. Even the ones that are born again, saved and seasoned, well-seasoned Christians. Well-seasoned. Been around forever, can quote you scripture from, from, from uh, the beginning to the end. Genesis all the way to Revelation. I was watching someone trying to quote scripture uh, here recently and I shared it with a few folks and then they were listening to it and they came to the same conclusion. They were quoting scripture, but they were misquoting the, the meaning and also kind of uh, fumbling on it a little bit. The reason being is because they were doing it to serve their own good. It's not that they didn't know it. Keep in mind, the devil knows scripture. The devil knows scripture. So we gotta be careful about what we hear, what we intake, and know when to vomit out and not keep, not keep what's in. And don't come back and bring it back in. It's disgusting. Can't stand to see dogs do that. Yet they do. You see, once that, that rejection happens, you're starting to finalize your own path. When that rejection starts to happen, you, you know, again, you're sinning, you, you know, and I'm speaking to the ones that, that already know, the ones that have the knowledge of righteousness. This is what this sermon is about. This is what we're trying to, to speak into your life, knowing that once you have had this knowledge, once you've grasped hold of it, going back into the mud, going back into the filth, it's unacceptable. We don't need it. We don't want it. You shouldn't want it. Now, does it happen? Yes, but is it willful? That's what we need to ask ourselves. 
do, are we willfully doing what we know that we should not? If you go ahead and do it anyway, that's a flesh move right there. You've decided that this is better for you, and it's going to be better. So let me give you an example. I was having a conversation this week. Someone was pointing at someone else, telling them what they were doing. And what I said was, there's two things, ways you can look at it. The person seems to be enjoying themselves in that moment. And many people will enjoy themselves in the moment. And it may last, they may be having a great time for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years until year 51 comes up. And all of a sudden, the consequences of all those actions that were happening in the past, as they say, as the chickens come home to roost, it's time. They have to, they're going through this. And all of a sudden, they, they, they just don't know what happened. I don't know why my life is falling apart right now. I was having such a great time out there. It's because they went back to the willful sitting. It's because the consequences that happened. People say, oh, you know, the Lord did that to me. No, not, no, don't, don't blame the Lord. Oh, the devil did that. No, 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 don't blame the devil on that either. It's not always the devil. It's not always the devil. God doesn't want things to happen to you that are wrong, but there are consequences that are left in place for our own actions. So sometimes we have to say, that's what I did. We can't blame other people that are around us. Oh, they, they made me do this. No one makes you do anything. Even God doesn't make you. He just preached a sermon on, on will, free will. Even God doesn't make you do things all the time. Does he push? Does he show? Does he try to convince? Absolutely. Absolutely. But understand this. You've got to accept. You've got to be allowed. See, that, that, I always tell people, they say, oh, the heavy lifting. I, I tell people about the heavy lifting. Heavy lifting is on you. Doesn't mean that God's not going to spot you. You ever lift weights and you got a spotter, you know, you get in trouble. God's right there to help you out of it. He's given his word to you that he wants nothing but for you to prosper. Even then, this is when I was talking about a guy talking about prosperity and sad thing about it is prosperity doesn't always mean monetarily Come on. see what God is asking is I want you to prosper in my word I want you to prosper in salvation I want you to prosper and glow in me I want you to get close to me that's the prosper that we're looking for I know that's what I look for I pray that each and every one of us start looking for that that song that was just played about worth. Know your worth. That song is so precious. So precious. Because there's so many people out there that don't know their worth. They start to just go towards what the world tells them they are. You see these last few sermons about don't come short. Don't come short of your breakthrough. Rest in him. And I never talk about that I, you know, I do these series or anything like that. The Lord just puts these, these sermons and he puts them in the order that he wants them in. As I think about right now, is willful sin a part of your character? That's how you begin to kind of fade back into losing out on your breakthrough. That's how you go back into coming short of his own, of his rest. You're not able to rest in him. You see, when you start to turn away and you start to reject there again, you're finalizing your own path. Your own path, you're finalizing it, but not in a good way. Your actions are being recorded. There's consequences to your actions. Let me give you an example of just a real world thing that happened to me when I was younger. I was a young firefighter, and I had this uh, junior firefighter that had got hired on and came under, underneath me. So in that moment when we are separate from the captain or the captain or the engineer, call them engineers, some people call them lieutenants, but when we're separate, I become the leader. So I was told one day, yeah, we can go, we're gonna go out for a run. And I was told, you know, you don't need a radio. Don't take the radio, but I was told to go out for a run. And so I went for a run and I was told not to go past a certain area. 
so that I could hear the, the horn. We were in uh, San Diego County. That's where I was a firefighter. Not to go past a certain part. But here I am thinking, you know what? I was at what we call the retirement stations. We didn't get a lot of calls. So I figured, ah, we ain't going to get a call. I'm going to run a little bit farther, and the firefighter's going to go ahead and follow with me. Because, again, they're trusting in me to make the right decision. So I ran, and we ran further than what we were supposed to do. Well, y'all know what happened. Of course we get a call. And all of a sudden, I can hear the air horn on the, on the fire engine. Because where I had gone, I was so far away, I couldn't hear the air horn. I heard the air horn on the fire engine. Got there, got suited up, ready to go. I delayed a response. Keep that in mind. I delayed a response, an emergency response. Now, as we get geared up and I hop in the engine and we're going, and I didn't think anything of it. Captain's going full blast and he, you know, we're, we're heading to the, to the fire. Fortunately, we got canceled. It means that they didn't, they didn't need us at that particular time. Everything was under control. But see, what I did, that willful part of me saying, I'm going to disobey that order, still caught up to me. We went that whole day, whole through the night, had dinner, watched a little TV at the end. Everything seemed fine till that next morning. That next morning I was out working and we were, you know, getting ready to, I forgot what we were going to do, but I was, I was still at the station. And then this loud voice, this authoritative voice came over the loudspeaker in the, in the station. And you can hear this all throughout the grounds. Firefighter Howard, please report to the captain's office. Oh man. Oh man. You see, when you hear that voice, those of you who have, the Lord has different voices, but you know when you're in trouble, you know the voice, and it doesn't matter if it's a soft voice or if it's a loud voice, you just know, I did something wrong. I did something wrong. See, what he did was, he had already recorded my actions from the day before. What he did was, he wrote me up. First write-up, first and last write-up I ever had. See, it's a funny thing, when you learn lessons, it's again about that knowledge. When you learn lessons, you need to adhere to them and never do it again. That was a lesson. That was a hard lesson to learn. I got written up, but then as I got older and I started to look back on this, I'm speaking to the Christian leaders now, when you're leading someone, you're leading a flock, be careful about what you say. Make sure you're giving them all because omission of things is just as bad as Falsely telling people things. See, I falsely told that firefighter, yeah, we'll be all right. Come on, let's go with me. And we both, I, she didn't get in trouble. I did. Now, see, that's not how our Lord works because once you have been revealed, the knowledge has been revealed, then that babe in Christ, which Christ already says, it'd be best if you just tie a stone around your neck and throw yourselves in the ocean and the waters if you mislead the young believe Christ is not just speaking about the children. He's speaking about the young in Christ, the young in him, the young that's learning and growing in him. So we've got to be careful as leaders, misleading people, twisting words, omitting things. See, we believe and we have to believe in the full Bible. Doesn't mean we're just going to talk about one part of the Bible and not the other. So that's why this conversation about sin is popping up. Everybody knows that there's sin and there people don't want to hear it. They don't want to look inside themselves. But I tell you, I ask you, I plead to you, search yourself. Search yourself. Your actions are being recorded. Just like my actions on that, at that station. It's being recorded. You didn't have to say anything. I knew what I had done. But he did have to make sure it was written. There's various Parts of scripture, I keep telling you, we'll talk about angels at some point in time. I know the Spirit will allow me to speak of that because it's been weighing heavy, heavily on me about angels. There's, there's, uh, you got some angels of God and then you got some angels of the devil that are out there. But the, the angels, you've seen several times in scripture where it says they're recording, they're writing. 
Understand that all that we do, they're writing. But how do we get away from willful sin? Keep it away from our character. Well, Genesis 4, 7, and 8 says, If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Verse 8 says, Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel and his brother, Abel, his brother, and killed him. See, God gives us a choice. Even back then in Genesis, what did he tell Cain? He says, you should rule over it. Rule over sin. And then not only that, it's reinforced in the New, in the New Testament. We have the power. The power is in us to rule over sin. We don't have to do it. We don't have to do it. Yet that's a flesh move that causes us to do that. That's the dualistic person in us. The flesh and the spirit lean more towards your spirit. Your spirit is trying to reach out to the Holy Spirit and keep your soul intact. See, there's parts of us that we, you know, we just don't understand. We go so much into the physical part, but we forget about our spiritual part, our spiritual self. Knowing that this is, the spirit is what, the spiritual world is what we're battling. The spiritual world is what we're battling. So Cain was told that we can, he can rule over sin. And we're told this, but unfortunately we just don't realize either fully or we don't believe or we're too weak in faith. There's so many people that are out there that are too weak in faith at times. There's many that don't believe. And we plant seeds there. But continuously, why do we do this? Why are we here every week? It's to fellowship so we can encourage one another. Bear one another's burden, as scripture tells us. Pull them out. Help them out. Especially the ones that don't fully realize and the ones that are just weak in faith. And what did Cain do afterwards? He hid. And so it's, it's so like us. We do something wrong and then we go and hide. We try to hide. It's a funny thing. Every time I, I, I look at scripture where God says, where are you? Let me go Old Testament. Where art thou? <laughs> they say, here I am. And I just shake my head. <laughs> you know God knows where you are. Why are you playing that game with him? Why are you playing that game with him? He knows. As I begin to close here, 1 Corinthians, it's in the bulletin there. 3.13 says, each one's work will become clear for the day, the day, Y'all know that day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. See, are you building up on something that is false? Your foundation, is it weak? What are you, what are you doing? Can't stand. And it's going to be tested by fire. Fire is a cleansing agent. Fire is something that Anything that goes through it, it gets transformed and cleansed. See, if I will singe anything, see, what sort of work are you involved in right now? What are you doing right now? Are you willfully sinning? Or are you fighting against that urge? See, Hebrews 12, 29 says, God is a consuming fire. He's a consuming fire. I ask you to search yourself truthfully. See who you are. Go through Romans 6. Talks about being your, your new character. Who you are. Colossians 3, uh, 3 and 12. Starts off talking about the character of a new man. Know who you are. And don't go back to the rest. There's a man... He gave a, gave a, a testimony of his vision. And he said he was allowed to see into the heavens. And what he saw was an evangelist who had been on earth and done many great works. And he came and he had 
these basically is, uh, we'll just call it stacks of paper, everything that he had done. And he put it up. And the fire consumed it and left very little. Very little was left. Then there was an older woman who was there. This older woman, she didn't have as many great works as he did. She didn't have all the accolades and everything that, you know, some evangelists should have. You know, preaching the good word, touching people, healing them. and she didn't, she didn't have all of that. Yet she put what she did have out. Because let's face it, when that day comes, you can't put anything else but what you've done. You can't add to it any longer. So she put hers up there. And the fire consumed very little. She had much more left over than what that evangelist did. It's amazing what you think you're doing and what you're actually doing, what God actually sees. You see, you have to understand that at the end of the day, that day, there's no participation points. See, we live in a world right now where we get participation trophies. Well, you know what? You were in it. You ran a good race. That's great. Here, here's a participation trophy for you. Funny thing, when I was growing up, life I was taught life didn't work that way. Come on. Life didn't work that way. There has to be winners and there has to be losers. See, that's how God works. There's something that's going to be right there with him, and he's going to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. But there's others where he's going to say, I know you not. I know you not. You see, that's what happened when I was talking to couple of weeks ago about the Israelites and they were in the in the wilderness see we're all we all go through a wilderness we all have to go through it it's a trial it's a trial and see when we're in that wilderness you have to understand you have to let yourself either get bitter or better which one are you going to choose bitter or better you see the bitter that's when you start to reject the better that's when you start to see I'm not going to return to this. That's when you start to see, I'm going to be that soldier on the battlefield. That's when you begin to get invigorated and saying, okay, I learned this lesson. I'm not going to do it again. It's like that lesson I told you about just now that I learned at the fire station. I didn't do it again. Never had a write-up again. See, that's one of those things where I didn't decide that, well, the captain didn't know. I could have taken that stance and said, he didn't know. I could have pretended like he hadn't have been there longer than I had and know what happens in the fire station. I've only been there for, I can't even remember, maybe it's a, a second year. Thinking that, oh, this station doesn't turn a wheel at all. And yet, just think of the catastrophe that could have happened. Not only did I leave this young, other young firefighter astray, that emergency response was delayed. I learned that lesson. The same lesson that our father tries to teach us. He allows us to go through these trials so that we can get better, not bitter. And we've got to start to say, willful sin is not a part of our character, not a part of my character, not a part of your character. And prayerfully, you start to speak into people that life that they need so it's not a part of their character. And the ones that are saying, yeah, you searched yourself, you searched yourself, and you found yourself lacking, just do better. Just do better. You have breath in your lungs to do that right now, right here and now. Whatever's been revealed to you, clean it up. And if there's something that's just, you're doing just fine and great, and the Holy Spirit says, you're doing good, stand on that. Let that be that foundation that you stand on. And march through triumphantly and sit next to him. He's offered us a, pl a place. He's offered us a place with him. Sitting next to him. So let's go out and take it. Keep that willful sin. Make it not a part of our character. Father, I thank you for this time, Lord. I thank you for the trials that we go through. I thank you for bringing us out of them. I thank you for showing us and giving us the power to overcome. For there is just nothing, nothing that should separate us from you. You don't do it, and we certainly shouldn't do it. Father, we just come to you. 
We leave every burden, every care, every thought that someone cast on us that's negative. We just leave it with you, Lord. We ask for strength and endurance. We ask for understanding where understanding is needed. Your wisdom, Lord. Your wisdom where wisdom is needed. Hearts that are disheartened, Lord, we ask that they just be softened. Soften our hearts, Lord. Let us feel what you feel, Lord. Let our heart break for what breaks yours, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, let willful sin be a part of us no more. Amen.